So, getting down to the nitty gritty now on BBC One, it's a holiday special for Watchdog. And some people just have to lie in the sun, or in any other tabloid for that matter. And Max Clifford has known a few who've done that. He's here to tell us that when it comes to timeshare, read the small print, not the headlines. Timeshare salespeople are right up there with politicians and journalists when it comes to having a reputation for honesty and straight talking. But to be fair, a timeshare can be a sound investment which gives you wonderful holidays and also the great feeling that you've got your own little piece of paradise. Unfortunately, Watchdog has discovered that a lot of Brits searching for that special place in the sun have been taken for a very nasty ride. Kate reports. How wonderful, a sun-soaked island with miles of golden sandy beaches. And on that island, my very own holiday home. Well, at least two weeks a year. The Lanzarote Beach Club is just the sort of place which offers this dream. Forget all those stories about dodgy timeshares in the Canaries. This is the real deal. There's a private beach, some luxury apartments, and an exclusive clubhouse. Perfect. Derek and Rona Dean stayed with some friends at the club three years ago and liked it so much they wanted to come back as timeshare owners in a new development called Lanzarote Beach Club 2. We were shown the uh, better areas of the uh, Lanzarote Beach Club and we were also shown an area where this future development was going to take place. And we even could choose where um, you know, we could have the sun at a certain time of the day if we chose the right place, wasn't it? The Dean's holiday photos show a mock-up of the new apartments with enough room to sleep six in comfort. It's beautifully furnished with satellite TV, separate kitchen with four-ring hob, microwave and dishwasher. A bargain at £6,500. And here it is, the Lanzarote Beach Club 2. Three years later and the building work isn't quite finished. To be honest with you, it doesn't look like it really started. In fact, there is no Lanzarote Beach Club 2, and there never will be. This hole in the ground has been here since 1995. That's when they started selling timeshares for apartments they've never managed to build. But that's just the start of the story. From the outset, we have paid maintenance, which has gone up rather dramatically. For 99, was 196 pounds. For the coming year, they are asking me for £432. The deans were told they had to keep paying their maintenance fees or they'd lose every penny of their £6,500. The only good news was they were promised the use of a deluxe villa in the old beach club if the new one wasn't quite ready. The deans and their two friends were given an apartment like this. It's not quite like the one in the presentation. Two of them had to sleep on this bed which is in the kitchen. No four-ring hob, microwave or dishwasher, no separate kitchen, and if the six of you want to watch satellite TV, you can't. It's not connected, and there aren't enough seats anyway. Some residents call this part of the club the council flats. Fortunately, the people behind Lanzarote Beach Club 2 have given up on the idea of selling a hole in the ground, although they continue to charge Derek money for it. Unfortunately, they've come up with another scheme to take money away from holiday makers. This is Gerald, a sales rep for the International Vacation Club, or IVC. And look, there's me being taken on a sales demonstration. A watchdog researcher and I listened to Gerald for four hours while he tried to get us to join IVC. This is how it works. If I pay an annual membership fee of £500 for the rest of my life, I get some points, which I'm told can be used for holidays around the world. You could stay in hotels. You could do a fly drive, stay in two or three days at a time, in motels in America or Australia or somewhere like that. Basically, I mean, they've got 700,000 outlets. Mm. We do a great deal with Sheraton, Hilton and Marriott, so you'd be sent information mm. like that. There is, of course, a catch. I have to pay a joining fee of £12,000. For a lifetime of holidays, though, that doesn't sound too bad. There's no limit at all on how many days you get away each year. <laughs> Then Gerald takes me to an apartment at the beach club. It's fantastically furnished with every modern convenience and enough room to sleep six in comfort. 
satellite TV, full satellite TV system. This is the kitchen, flooring, hob, oven, microwave, dishwash. Hang on, this is sounding a bit familiar. I think it's time to leave. But as I do, Gerald reminds me that I can have two weeks annual holiday for the rest of my life for £12,000. Well, I don't have £12,000 to spend, so they offered me a loan to pay for my points, £150 a month. Add to that my annual membership fee, and I'd be paying £2,300 every year for two weeks in Lanzarote. Peter Vogel and Mike Worth were long-standing members of the Beach Club, but three years ago they paid £5,000 to swap their timeshare for IVC points. For that, they could have four weeks at any of IVC's 700,000 outlets. The first time we tried to use the points, we um, sent the request to IVC and asked for Marbella. Basically, when the reply came, the number of points, the 50,000 points that we had, would only allow us three nights in an apartment in Marbella. To go to San Francisco it would take us um, 10 years to save up the points and uh, I think it would cost us about two and a half to three thousand pound. So at the end of the day we've paid uh, nearly six thousand pound and we've been, been unable to have an annual two-week holiday by moving into this point system. Watchdog has learned that there aren't 700,000 resorts connected to the IVC and they don't have deals with Hilton, Marriott or Sheraton. We know of only one resort where IVC members can be guaranteed to use their points, the Lanzarote Beach Club. I'm appalled to be quite honest. Yes, because all the promises that they made, that they're not fulfilling them. The people behind all of this are very difficult to pin down. They appear to operate using P.O. boxes. Letters to members often don't have names on them and complaints receive no replies. So surely they'd love to speak to Watchdog. Hello, I'm from BBC Watchdog. We'd like to speak to the person in charge, please. Today is Thursday, actually. This is uh, a uh, very busy day, mm -hmm. right? And they don't attend people today. Mm -hmm. You don't want to answer the complaints that have been made about the holidays here. We've had dozens of complaints about people who've been sold holidays here. Have you got nothing to say to those people? You have nothing to say. Nothing to say. Eventually, I'm told to wait outside and someone will come to speak to us. We're here from BBC Watchdog. We've had dozens of complaints about this place. We'd just like to ask some questions about the way you sell holidays here. Right, OK. Is that... Um, yeah, we are, we are filming, yeah. If you turn that, I'll give you a name for somebody, actually. There's nobody here that can speak to you at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is a name you can contact with any complaints or what have you. It's actually dealing with this in England, by the name of Max Someone Clifford. in England? Mm -hmm. Max, Max Clifford. What, the publicist? If you help, if you speak to him in England, you can answer any questions you have. We'll be speaking to Max Clifford in a moment, but before we do, here's the company's answer to these specific complaints. All the people featured in the film got exactly what they paid for. The Dean's contract doesn't say anything about Lanzarote Beach Club 2 because, as we've seen, there is no Lanzarote Beach Club 2. And Mike Worth and Peter Vogel know exactly how many points they had and if they want nicer holidays, they'll need more points. Max Clifford is here. What's going on, Max? That's basically it. You know, there's been 10,000 members of the Lanzarote Beach Club for many, many years. Very happy. You All get that the money from a hole in the ground? Well, since no one offered them that, you know, I can only say that's their interpretation. Do you think some salesmen are, because timeshare salesmen in the past and for resorts like this, got a pretty dodgy reputation? Do you think there's some who yeah, are, I, and are I, yeah, pulling a fast one here? Because I'm sure that salesmen worldwide in all walks will pull fast ones the way that politicians do and even TV presenters do. But Lanzarote Beach Club has really been held up as an example to all other beach clubbers of, of a successful, well-run organisation yeah, when, when he was trying to persuade Kate, for example, to um, go ahead with a deal, he said, oh, you can get great deals with uh, the Hilton, the Marriott, the Sheraton, all sorts of promises. Now, none of those hotels had heard of this. No, because they're it individual. To them. It wasn't the International Vacations Club, IVC, that booked it in their name. They were booked in the name of individual people. And I think several hundred people stayed at Hilton and Marriott hotels booked by IVC in last year. Last year alone, IVC booked nearly 15,000 holidays in Australia, in the Caribbean, in the Maldives, in Spain, in France, in all kinds of other places. Lots and lots of very happy customers. Over 110 mm. 
different places. Well, they're, Everybody's they're happy. They're obviously You're always going to get the odd few yeah, yeah, absolutely. That that's are that. moaning. All I would say is... Is it moaning? Are they you, moaning? Are they whinging? Well, they? I think if you read the contract and you get exactly what that contract promises you, then you're whinging. Yeah. Do you think those nice people in the film are whingers? Yes, I do, yeah. I think they're whingers. They look like whingers to me and they sound like whingers to me as well. Do you You've not got think a contract, you sign the contract, and you get exactly what you promised, you can't complain. Well, clearly, we've had 30, 40 complaints about them. Who knows how many more we'll get after, after we've uh, spoken about it on this programme tonight. But clearly, they're doing quite well because they've hired you. And you don't come cheap. Oh, I've been. I, no, I, I charge fortunes, but I've also stayed there several times over the years. So I've seen it firsthand what a good place it is, what a professional. So place, when you're next over there, and if you can find out whoever runs it, because we had a few difficulties, as you can see, will you have a word with them and say, "Great place, I enjoy it. Thousands of people are very satisfied with it, but sort some of your salespeople out, for oh, goodness sake." If, if, will you if, take that message back it, with you? It's very simple, Nicky. If anybody can prove to me or to them that a salesman has been promising what they can't deliver, that salesman will be sacked immediately. Thank you very much, Max. Nice to talk to you, Nicky, as always.